Corinne, I just need to ask you a question. There's okay. no pressure. Okay. How cool am I? <coughs> oh, God. I'm sorry. Let me do that. How cool am I as a dad? Wow. What a question. You know, in I front feel of like all there's of the so many layers to that. Yes, but in front of the world. In front of and the Jesus. Oh, wow. Jesus is present now. You know, I would say to other people, <laughs> really cool. Super cool guy, you know, funny, yeah. charismatic right. to me. Wow, I see it coming. You know, I'd give you about a seven okay. and a half out of ten. No, I'll take that. I'll work Eight on that. Eight out of ten. I'll work for on coolness. that. coolness. I'll work on that. You know, you know? There's, there's slight improvements that need to be made. Like this. <laughs>
No, she wasn't. She wanted to go to no. yoga. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> but you know what that's I mean? What so I think it's a very unique time in your life where you're figuring out how your parents are going to play a role in your expansion as, as, a, as a human mm. being. So dad, what aspect of the father-daughter relationship do you think our show speaks to? Also your experience as a dad, like what resonates with you? You know what it is, what we hope to get out of this is the absolute fear inside of all dad's <laughs> heart that they're gonna blow it, that they're gonna mess it up for their kid. That's what we all live under. And that's why I tell a lot of fathers who maybe the relationship with the mom didn't go well or whatever it is. And so sometimes we retreat. And we just say, well, that's the mom's responsibility because she is the nurturer. And I, I hope that we'll be able to show that fathers have to get beyond that, work mm -hmm. harder. Yeah, your kid's gonna be mad at you. And sometimes you may wanna break and run, but if you get past that line of anger, there's a lot of love there for you to have because all they really wanna do is, they wanna feel like they can be themselves and, and not feel judged. So hopefully this shows a father who's trying to keep up with the daughter, become friends with the daughter, but don't float too far into friend land. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, be able to be a parent. And I think that along with David Allen Greer's character, it's actually two dads, you know? Mm -hmm. My pops in general just laughs at me. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> you think that's gonna work? <laughs> How do you think I measure up to other sitcom dads? You know what, I feel like you, you measure up pretty high, if not above them, because I mean, you and then also the character Brian, which is also based on you, even if you don't know what's right, um, know how to go about it, you, you always show up and you always support me and Annalise. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the whole show is about, right? It's not about knowing exactly what to do and being the perfect dad. It's about being the present dad. It's mm -hmm. about being here. And I will say, you're so great at that in real life and then also the character Brian as well. Like he, all he's trying to do is understand Sasha and understand her world and what she likes and and he does it in all the wrong ways. But I think the sentiment still resonates with her and then also with me and Annalise. Like we're aware with <laughs> you're trying, yeah. you know? And I think that's all that all that matters. Yeah. Take that ward. <laughs> do y'all know who I'm talking about? Cleaver. You youngins Google that. <laughs> and Jerry Mathers as the beaver. Now that we've done uh, Dad Stop Embarrassing Me, mm -hmm. what else is on the horizon for you, young entrepreneur, young writer, director, actress? Well, I mean, Dad, I mean, you know this because we work together so closely, but I feel like I, I've really leaned into to writing and producing. I didn't know that I would love producing as much as I did on the show. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I took that role and I was like, wow, I could do so many other things with it. And mm -hmm. so there's a lot of different things that are on my development slate that I have my own slate now, which mm. I was very excited about. Hashtag uh, slate. <laughs> hashtag slate. And so I feel like, I, I say this a lot, but I feel like you've taught me, you know, you don't have to be one thing. You don't have to be an actor mm -hmm. or a producer or a writer. You can be all of those things and a business owner. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I feel like I'm just trying to do it all right now. Yeah. As, uh, and I know you will do it and you'll do a fantastic job because you did a fantastic job on it. Oh, thanks, Dad. What's up, what's up next to you? Uh, well, you know, there was a little movie that I did years ago that wasn't recognized uh, by the Oscars. It was called Booty Call. And, oh. you know, there is a bad taste in my mouth from that being overlooked, uh, some of my best work. So, me and a couple of friends, we like, we'll reboot it and we'll call it Booty Called. And <laughs> it's basically just a lot of reflecting, you know, because of the political atmosphere right now. Some of those jokes may not fly, but we'll just reflect. Wow, just reflect. I didn't know you were doing that. Um, yeah. Great, so we'll look forward to that. Watch out, Academy. We coming.